Yo, what's up everybody? It is your boy Buttermink and we are back with an IBLD League Week 5 battle versus the Brisbane Cyphers and their coach D. Willie. Um, this week we decided to bring a team of Firium Z Zera Aura, uh, Specially Defensive Mew, a Air Balloon Mold Breaker Excadrill, uh, a Defensive Charizard X, a Sticky Webs Rabombi, and a specially defensive Rotom Wash. As you can see, my opponent brought uh, Scolipede, Clefable, Celesteela, Latios, Arcanine, and Tangrowth on uh, no Mega Mobile, which is awesome here. Um, but honestly, looking at his team, like Scolipede kind of just runs through me if he has Aqua Tail for the Excadrill. Uh, so my best immediate response to that thing is just Charizard. Uh, so, considering I think he's going to lead that, I just go ahead and lead my defensive Charizard. I can take an Earthquake, I can take a Z Earthquake, I can take any of that pretty easily. Uh, so, I'm just going to lead off. Here the battle starts with uh, my Charizard, as I do get that right, and he does lead with Skullipede. Uh, now this turn, I click Will-O-Wisp, because I figured he'd protect, and you know, it wasn't you know, horrible to reveal that, but he actually ends up revealing the substitute, uh, predicting the Dragon Dance, uh, as he, uh, just straight up goes sub and avoids that, so that's already I'm off to a bad start, uh, as the Will-O-Wisp obviously doesn't hit the sub, as he's gonna get the speed boost, as I'm going to just click Flare Blitz, cause I don't need the sub up here, as he's just gonna click straight up go for the Swords Dance, uh, which, Puts him at plus two. Uh, now, at this point, after I knock off his sub, I should have gone straight into Excadrill because the ground Z was fairly obvious here. And uh, I count, I lived a plus two earthquake, but I didn't live a plus two ground Z. But even then, I shouldn't have stayed in on this. I definitely should have gone straight into Excadrill because then I could have avoided the attack easily and threatened him out because he eventually reveals that. His only two attacking moves on this are Poison Jab and Earthquake, meaning he cannot touch Excadrill with his life. So... Ugh. Yeah, but I don't do that, and instead he just clicks Tectonic Rage and Charizard just drops like there's no tomorrow. Uh, cause, you know, Charizard's not surviving a plus two Earthquake. Uh, Z Earthquake, specifically. Uh, and yeah, that's that's fun. As Charizard's just gonna just gonna drop. So next, I go into Excadrill since uh, I want him to reveal to me that he has Aqua Tail. Because if he does, well, uh, that's basically G. But he doesn't. He actually just hard switches right into Celesteela as I go for the fairly predictable Earthquake, and obviously it doesn't affect Celesteela. So that's that's fine. That's nothing terrible. I can just go straight into Rotom, as he actually reveals that he has the Leech Seed, and I'm going to get seated, because uh, Celesteel is just an annoying bitch, basically. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get seated, and then he's just going to straight up withdraw. Uh, he's he's going to go hard with Able, as I'm just going to Volt Switch out of there, because don't want to take the seed damage. As he reveals to be pretty defensive, uh, judging by the, how much damage that did, uh, as this just gives me a free chance to go into uh, Underminer and click an Iron Head here, uh, and I believe that's what I do, because uh, I don't really have. Oh no, I double into Rotom, predicting the Arcanine to come out, but instead he goes uh, hard Tangrowth. Which is interesting. I figure Arcanine would be a better switch. Then you can go into Tangrowth and not even have to fear an X Scissor. But uh, at this point, I can just get my trick off and give this thing a Choice Scarf, which will heavily neutralize it uh, as he gets that. And I get a Rocky Helmet. He actually goes for a knockoff and uh, knocks off my Rocky Helmet that I got just a little bit ago. Because now this frees me up to hard switch out into. Uh, Zeraora, because he's probably not going for... He's locked in a knockoff, actually. And this is my Z-Captain, so he does nothing for him to knock off. 
Uh, so I could just basically hit that switch in for free. As this time, he goes Arcanine, as I believe I just Volt Switch out of there, uh, and go back into Rotom Watt. Oh no, I go for a knockoff first, as he reveals Leftover, of oh, Shuckerberry. He reveals Shuckerberry, so I Volt Switch out of there. So see, this would have been a better switch in immediately into Excadrill, but hey, it is what it is. As now I go into Mew, actually, uh, cause I think, I thought I could take a Flare Blitz, um, but as it reveals, I actually take, you know, over half from this Flare Blitz, and I'm not surviving another one. So I immediately have to go out into, uh, Rotom, and, uh, you know, hope I outspeed, and he reveals the Crunch, which, you know, good on him. Uh, but I go for the Hydro Pump here, and Rotom is blind, meaning that now I am down four to six with all of his monster life and my Rotom, which would have been valuable late game, uh, basically is now dead. As I'm just going, because at this point I don't care if he does switch in Tang, uh, I'm just going to straight up go for the Plasma Fist because I want this thing dead and uh, I'm going to kill it, thank goodness, but now I'm still, you know, down five to four and I've lost two of my better moms in this matchup. As he's just going to go for a Scullipede, which I know he probably doesn't have Protect here, so I'm just, I believe, oh no, he doubles out into Tangrowth, which is weird because that was have been an easy opportunity for me to click Fire Punch, but I'm just going to Volt Switch out predicting the double, and uh, this time I'm going to get into Rabombi, uh, maybe threaten him with a bug move and go out and Celesteela, but I'm also going to be able to get my webs up. So, you know, that's awesome, because I'm going to click him. I still have Speed of Scarf Tangrowth even with web, so, you know, that's fun. As he's just gonna straight up click Toxic, which means he's locked into it, uh, meaning this is pretty much a free switch into Excadrill if I want it, but I think he'll predict that here and go, s oh no, I do, I think I, I don't know why I'm not using Momentum. Oh yeah, I go Mew just in case he does Toxic again, so I can get the Toxic back at him, but he just goes out into Scullipede, uh, which is not good, but he'll get caught in the sticky webs. Um, and this turn, he's going to just hard switch out back into Tangle as I go for the U turn, uh, just because I don't want to be in versus this uh, Scolipede with my Mew, because uh, it could have, you know, Mega Horn, or it could have a Pin Missile, or whatever. Uh, so this time I'm just going to go into Underminer, uh, and honestly not sure why I did this. Like, it had better switches. Probably because I didn't put a bug move on the Bombi. Uh, as I'm going to just predict him trying to go for damage so he can knock off my air balloon. So I'm just gonna put B out there and let that take the damage. As he knocks off my focus ass, which was broken by the poison anyway, so not too worried about that. As uh, he's gonna withdraw and go into Celesteela this time, as I think I just start firing off Moonblast trying to get damage. Yeah, I go for Moonblast, um, kill that. Or uh, don't, obviously don't kill that. Uh, and it does minimal damage, but at this point I don't really have a switch into this thing, uh, so I'm just going to keep firing off Moonblast. Um, this one actually does get a special attack drop, uh, which is awesome, as he's just going to go for the Autotomize, which I don't understand Leech Seed Autotomize sets, like, with Celesteel, I feel like you either go completely defensive or you go completely offensive, and I feel like just mixing it is kind of weird, and I don't really get the point of it, but, you know, maybe that's just me. Because I'm gonna actually going to get another special attack drop uh, as he finally goes for the Leech Seed, obviously. He's going to basically get back all of his health from that Moon Blast because it's doing absolutely nothing. As uh, I believe I'm going to this turn die from, no oh no, I live on Toxic, as I'm just going to fire off yet another Moon Blast, as I believe he just goes straight for the Beast Boost kill with Heavy Slam. Uh, no, he has Iron Head, I'm not sure why I didn't have anything super heavy on my team, uh, but yeah, he kills with Iron Head, uh, but this actually gives me, I see that his special attack rises, and I know that he's still at minus one, so I know that, uh, there are always a pretty free switch in here, uh, 
as this turn I should have popped my Fire Room Z pretty much immediately, because Tang was his obvious switch in. Uh, but I believe I just go for the Plasma Fist. Yeah, I just go for the Plasma Fist. As this next turn, I'm actually going to pop the Fire Room Z. Uh, just, you know, to get more damage off this Tango. As, uh, I'm gonna finally reveal that this is indeed my Z Captain, and, uh, Gonna just pop all that fire, gonna hit him with that blaze. And yeah, just, it's all about what I'm doing here. Uh, at this point, though, the game's kind of lost. Which is fun, you know. I love that. As this is gonna put a decent chunk to about 50% or so to Tango. Um, actually, more like 60. As he's just gonna knock off and it's gonna do, you know, minimal damage again. As this turn. He withdraws Tangrowth, uh, and he goes out into Clefable, uh, as I click, uh, the, I believe Fire Punch, because it covered, yeah, I click Fire Punch, uh, as I'm gonna get very minimal damage off on this thing, because it is, after all, a Clefable, and I'm going to just knock off this thing's leftovers, because screw that, and, uh, he's just going to Moonblast me, and I'm gonna take, you know, some damage from that. It's actually going to drop. It's going to lower my special attack. Now that matters. Uh, as this turn, I'm going to go for the plasma fist because uh, I he's in range of them, but it's a roll, and we end up not getting the roll. And Clefable lives on like one, and then yeah, we're basically stuck in this position uh, because it lived on just a, a roll. Uh, and that's honestly annoying. And obviously I'm going to vote switch out because I don't win this 1v1. And because my special attack got lowered, it did absolutely nothing. Uh, this time I'm going to go into Mew. Because uh, I believe I have Toxic on this Mew. As he reveals Cosmic Power. Um, I predicted he'd be unaware because of Zard and Excadrill. Uh, which is why I bought Mold Breaker Excadrill. Uh, but it turns out as soon as I Toxic him, he reveals that he's actually Magic Guard. So, uh... Zard would have been great in this late game uh, if I had kept it, you know, around. But he's just going to the soft boiled as he reveals that, you know, he's magic guard. He's not taking anything from poison. As I'm going to set up my rocks, which took me way too long in this match because uh, he's been switching out heavily and, you know, I'm not getting anything out of it. Uh, as he's going to go for the second cosmic powers, I'm going to. Uh, I think I, yeah, I U-turn this turn, uh, as he goes straight for the Moon Blast, uh, and I go straight into Excadrill, as I know I need to get a Swords Dance up if I want to start doing any damage to the rest of his team, uh, but he, as soon as I switch in, obviously he's gonna Moon Blast and pop my Air Balloon, uh, I'm going to have to Swords Dance if I want to start cutting through his team, uh, but he actually reveals the Flamethrower when I do do this Swords Dance, so, that means, basically I have to get a flinch here if I still even want to have a chance to win as, you know, he just pops a flamethrower easy peasy and, uh, yeah, it does well over half of my health. Uh, and then I just go straight for the iron and I'm like, please flinch, you know, I've missed moves, I've, you know, not gotten rolls to go in my favor, but nope, it does not flinch and we're gonna just lose Excadrill to this thing now, uh, which is fun. Uh, and then I go out into, you know, Survivor again, because it's low enough that it is in Plasma, oh, it is in Volt Switch range? Yeah, it's in Volt Switch range, uh, I get the crit, but that didn't matter all that much, as now his Clefable's dead, uh, but now it's basically my Mew and my Scolipede versus the world, or my Mew and my Zeroa versus the world, and I have no answer to that Latios now. No, as he's just gonna go, he's gonna get the webs, I'm gonna take webs, I'm going to U-turn out, oh no, he's going to poison jab me, uh, oh, that's, he's still faster, as he poisons me on the poison jab, which is, you know, fun, as I'm going to U-turn, and now, uh, this Scolipede, because it took webs, is now at neutral, so I'm pretty sure, oh hey, I'll outspeed this, I can just go for, uh, Plasma Fist and I'll be fine, but no, it turns out that 
for whatever reason, his Scullipede at neutral outspeeds my uh, Zero Aura. So I definitely misprep that, because uh, I have no clue why that would even happen. Uh, just figure, I figured, I don't know actually why that happened, because I out, pretty sure I had pep to outspeed Latios, and Scullipede's slower than Latios, so I'm not so sure how a neutral uh, Scullipede killed my Zero Aura like that, uh, but as you see, Mew's gonna live on two as I'm gonna roost uh, off, and you know, this, obviously this is a losing battle, in fact, Celesteel is his best switch in here, uh, just cause there's nothing my Mew can do to it, in fact, there's nothing my Mew can do to the Scullipede either, cause I'm only packing U-Tone, and uh, yeah, he's just gonna Earthquake again, I'm obviously gonna live it, cause I lived it from lower health from lower health earlier, so I'm just gonna keep clicking roost. I believe this turn he's like, okay well this clearly is getting me nowhere, I'm going to just sword stance up, and uh, as soon as he does that, you know, <laughs> this is pretty much game, uh, like nothing I have to answer for his team, and uh, yeah, he sword dances, I'm going to, I believe at this point, click U-turn, or, oh no, I roost again to get back up to full. Uh, and then, I believe next turn, I click my only damaging move, which is U-turn, which, you know, fun, fun times and all that. Uh, because the Scarlet Beat keeps just collecting speed boosts, even though it doesn't need it. As, uh, he's actually gonna go for the Poison Jab this time, and, uh, it's going to do, you know, quite a lot, as I'm going to just start attacking it, but, uh, at this point the game was already over, so it wasn't like I was gaining anything. Am I just roosting over and over as he's just going to be able to click another poison jab and take me out and we're going to lose 4-0 in week 5 to some unfortunate rolls, some unfortunate misses, some bad play in the early rounds by me. It's just, this wasn't a pretty game, it wasn't a fun game. Uh, it was, ugh, not, not a big fan of this one, but, uh, you know, it happens and you just have to move on and hopefully you get better next time. So I appreciate all you bright, lovely people out there and thank you for watching.